If you have been in the productivity space for a little bit of time, you probably have heard about weekly reviews. The exercise that all high achievers seem to be doing and they all praise that this is super, super helpful. But if you have tried them, you have probably noticed that they're a little bit hard to maintain. Because what I've seen is that normally I will start to do them. I will do it for a couple of weeks, maybe three, because I get super excited. And then I just stopped and I stopped one week. So then the next week is going to come, but as past week I didn't do it, I'm also not gonna do it, and that's it. I stopped the habit altogether. But after making this a habit, I can totally assure that this is 80% of the success that my system can give me. So in this video, I want to show you what a good weekly review should have, how each part is going to help us, and some tips to make them stick. So you don't do them just two times and then forget about them. Okay, so what I have found is that a good weekly review should have three things. And next to those things, I'm also going to show how long it normally takes me to do each of them. Because as the title says, this can be done in under 30 minutes. The first part is reflection of the past week. As Einstein said, if you wanna know the future, look at the past. I'm a very big fan of having perspective in life and taking a look at things from a bird's eye view. So checking what we did during the past seven days is gonna bring us that perspective and can help us see what can we do better for the next week. And how is this helping us? Well, as I said, this is going to bring us perspective. It's going to help us to take the blinders off and actually see what is going on in, in our weeks. Because with these blinders, we can just see the task that we have at hand. Once we finish, we go to the next one, then to the next one, then to the next one, but we never stop to see where we are going. And thanks to this perspective, we can extract a lot of insights. For example, the most powerful one for me was that I realized that I was over scheduling every week. So I put much more tasks that I can tackle for each week. So then in my reflection, I will see that I had so many more tasks still pending to do. So once I noted that, I tried to fix this by estimating the time that it was going to take me in the step in my system when I'm going to add a new task, I added a new property, which is to estimate the time that that task was going to take me, which then in my scheduling phase, I will take into account. The next part of the review is going to be to plan the following week. So this is going to be the old school weekly scheduling. We will check the things that we have pending to do, and then we will assign a date for that task to be completed. And of course, we are gonna check also the estimated time so we don't overschedule. And then once it's scheduled, we will just have to focus day by day on the tasks that are pending for each of the days. And how is this helping us? Okay, this process is going to help me to also have perspective and see where this week as a whole is bringing me. Because I see weeks as whole chunks and I will assess all the tasks that are scheduled for a particular week and see where all those tasks are going to bring me. Are they all pushing forwards all the goals that I have set for myself? Am I focusing too much in one area, neglecting another? By the way, this is also something that we can automate in Notion. We can create this view that tells me how many tasks I have scheduled for each of the goals. So if I see that I haven't scheduled any tasks for a goal that I told myself that I wanted to pursue, then I'm gonna go back to scheduling to make sure that I will take care of everything I want in that particular week. And the last part of the weekly review is going to be the maintenance tasks. These are for things that normally we forget to do and that if we don't do them, our systems are gonna get messy. In my case, this is cleaning my idea inbox and organizing my laptop's desktop. But if you're also using Notion and some of your databases get messy or get outdated, this is a very good opportunity to create a linked database within your weekly review with the filters that you need in order to update those databases. And the way that this is helping me is to avoid my systems to get messy. Okay, so all of this was what I consider every weekly review should have, but then how to make them stick? Because I think even if we realize that they can be very powerful, it is still quite difficult to make them stick. So I have found three ways that can be quite helpful for this. The first one is to depend on them. At least you should depend on one part of your weekly review and that if you don't do it, you will not be able to operate in your next week. So in my case, for example, this is the scheduling phase. If I don't do this scheduling phase, I'm not able to do anything in my way because I don't remember what to do. So I need that previous process. So then during my week, I know what I need to get done. So if I haven't done my weekly review, on Monday morning, I am forced to do it because I depend on it. And it's going to be the first thing that I'm going to do. Another reason why we may be failing at doing our weekly reviews can be just a time reason. Maybe we are not finding the right time to do it. So here we can experiment with some different timings and see which one sticks. I know that for me, what always works is that my weekly review is always the last 
thing that I do before going on my weekend. So I don't have a set schedule, it is just the last thing I do. But I know that for some people it's helpful to create a recurring task for every Friday at 5 p.m. for example, to do this weekly review. So just try different timings and see which one works. And finally is to find an accountability partner. If none of the above works, I have found that having an accountability partner that is going to ask you how your review went and how you are doing with your systems is very helpful. So for example, I am currently coaching a client and every week we go over what's worked for him in the system and what hasn't. And he's telling that just because of the fact that he's meeting me that week, he's forced to do his weekly review because he knows that I'm going to ask him for that. So in your case, could be your partner, your roommate, another friend that is as nerd about productivity as you, or even you can hit me up and I can help you. So well, as I said before, I can certainly say that 80% of the outcomes of my system comes from this weekly review, which is even less than 20% of the effort that I put in it. So according to Pareto, this is quite efficient. I have found this to be a super high leverage activity, and I hope that after this video, you also understand why this exercise is so important, and that you have discovered some ways that you can actually make this stick. And if you wanna see more in detail how my weekly review works, I'm gonna link over here the video in which I walk you through step by step everything that my weekly review contains. So this is everything for today, guys, and as always, hasta la próxima.